interview is being conducted for St John Scotland, 75 years of making a difference. My name is Dr Sue Morrison and the respondent is Alex Cribb. This is the 15th of November 2021 and the interview is taking place in Alex's home in Inverness. Thank you very much for agreeing to be interviewed for the project, Alex. My pleasure, thank you. For the record, would you please confirm your full name? My name is Alexander John Cribb. And what is your year of birth? Fifty-four. Where were you brought up? In Dingwall, Russia. Not far from here. And when did you move to Inverness? When I was uh, 18 or 19 I moved to Inverness because uh, so long ago the travel was not quite as uh, readily available as, as now and uh, my work took me to Inverness so I moved to Inverness, met my wife and the rest is history. <laughs> Would you mind if I asked you a bit about your birth family? My family? Yes, in, in Dingwall. Yes, my family, my mother is still alive. Sadly, my father passed away six years ago. I have a brother and a sister, both married. My brother lives in Muraboard, which is very close, between here and Dingwall. My sister lives in Dingwall. My sister works in Rigmore Hospital as an auxiliary nurse, and she has done for many years. Her husband is a painter and decorator, has his own company, and he has done for many years. My brother uh, recently retired two years ago. He retired from the Navy as a lieutenant commander, and uh, his wife was a teacher. She retired three weeks ago, and she travelled around the Highlands teaching children how to sign, teaching sign language. There's they have two children. Uh, one lives in London, who recently moved back from her employment in Dubai, and the other daughter lives in the uh, south of France, where she's a teacher in languages. Excellent, thank you. Um, how did you meet your wife? Uh, we met at a, a dance, would you believe, in a, a place called Strathpeffer. And the dance there was very popular in the Highlands. Buses travelled from all around the Highlands to and from. So uh, for someone from Dingwall to meet someone from Inverness, uh, we could only meet at the dance. <laughs> Again, because of the travel these days. So we met 50 years ago this year, and we've been married for 48. Congratulations. Thank you. Um. Could you tell me a bit about your work history? My work history, I was a crane operator and I, uh, a company I worked for asked me to go offshore in the North Sea in 1978 and that was to cover a holiday period that one of the other operators was taking some holidays. So I went offshore for one trip, two weeks and I thought, I like this. So uh, I went back. Subsequently, one of the, my colleagues had uh, hurt his back, so I was asked to go and cover for him. I was there eight, eight months, eight trips, and in that time I was approached by a major company from Bath in England and asked would I uh, take employment in that company. So I joined that company and I was 26 years employed by that company. In 2008, uh, by that time I'd been in the training department, I was training supervisor, and I decided at that time it was going to be time for me to start on my own as a consultant. So I started on my own as a consultant and worked exclusively on uh, onshore abroad in uh, different parts of the world, as uh, consulting in, in, in uh, cranes lifting particularly in offshore supply bases, so we would be loading the supply vessels for to take the equipment offshore, and when it came back onshore we would unload the supply vessels and send the equipment back to the, the owner companies. Well, that was very interesting. I retired from there about three years ago. My wife required a, a new replacement hip, so she needed some support 
and when the contract that I was on finished, I decided I would, I would uh, retire. Sadly, that lasted about three weeks, and I was uh, asked to help a friend of mine in Muir of Ord, who was some cranes, so I was asked to give him some assistance, and I still do one or two days a week, and that keeps me active, keeps me occupied, keeps my brain working, and gives me a reason to get up and get out in the morning. Thank you. Could you tell me when you first heard about St John Scotland? I heard about St John Scotland in the early 90s. A friend of mine was involved in the order in Highlands here. He subsequently became the chairman and I subsequently became secretary. Uh, that was about 1994. Uh, at that time I was doing two weeks away from home and two weeks at home which gave me plenty of time at home to become immersed in the works of the Order in the Highlands. So in 1997 I was invested when the festival was in Inverness and I've been involved ever since. I had some time away when I was abroad. I had some time when I wasn't as active but uh, when that stopped I became active again and, and I'm now secretary to the chairman in the Order. At one stage I was the chairman of the association, but when the association uh, finished, I was secretary to the, the chairman in the order. Could you tell me what the difference is between the association and the committee? The association, historically, <coughs> excuse me, historically the association raised the funds and the order dispersed the funds. In the Highlands, the most people in the association were members of the order as well. So we all we, we, we all mixed and we all worked together for the good of the order. And can you remember when the association was abolished and um, kind of came into the committee work as well? It's quite a number of years ago now. I, I don't remember the exact year, but I do remember that we had a transition from having the two separate organisations to moving into one. And in the Highlands, it was fairly seamless. We had, we had, no, we had no big problems with the transition from in, in losing the association to uh, everyone being in the order. Could I just ask, um, we're talking about the Highlands, but what area does that cover? The Highlands covers the Highlands from... Uh, where the the nearest our nearest uh, next area is Aberdeenshire, and so we we are the west from Aberdeen and north. We had uh, the Western Isles, but we didn't have the Northern Isles. But I understand that uh, there's a move afoot to bring Orkney into the Highland area. I'm not quite sure if that's uh, if that's going to happen, but. I'm advised that there's a possibility that might happen, which suits us because we've recently added a, a young lady from uh, Orkney and to, we've welcomed her into the Highland area. Uh, it's a huge geographical area and sometimes that causes problems with meetings, uh, people coming from far away from Sky, for instance we have members in Sky who come. One of the positive outcomes from the COVID pandemic is the, the advent of the Zoom meetings. And Zoom has been a godsend to us in the Order in the Highlands and other organisations that, that, that I'm a member of. We organise Zoom meetings now when people can come from all over the, from all over the world indeed and they can enjoy the meeting and they can participate in the meeting. And that was one of the problems that we had, that people couldn't devote a whole day to come to Inverness for a, a two-hour meeting so they could participate. Now, now they can, and we're very happy about that. As you say, that is a huge area, enormous. Um, 
how many committee members did you have and how many attended meetings going back you know, to the early days? We had a fairly large committee, but our committee normally would consist of probably around 15. Sadly, mainly in the Merness area because of the logistics of, of attending. Also, uh, after every meeting, the, the minutes would be distributed to everyone, so that if there was any comments or, or questions, then they could become involved that way. Um, now with Zoom, it's, uh, although the minutes still go out, but the minutes go out now electronically to all the members, so everyone can read the minutes and participate if they wish. How were members selected? and asked to join originally? Asked to join the order. Mm. We have, uh, historically, people would join as volunteers and be involved in, in volunteering in, in uh, any of the activities that, that we have. And as they progress in the, in the volunteering, then we have them, uh, or we apply to have them admitted as members. And that, for us, that's been very successful over the years. We have uh, friends, friends and family who who join through their friends or family, come along to assist, uh, become interested, become involved, learn more about the order, and uh, and, and then eventually join. How easy is it to encourage new volunteers to join? Sadly, these days, it's a bit more difficult than historically it used to be. But again, I'm a member of several other organisations and we have the same, same problems to encourage new members. And, and sadly, the COVID pandemic has contributed to that. People are very reluctant to become involved in, in mass gatherings. and So uh, that, that does create a problem. Has the committee been speaking about how to tackle this issue? We constantly speak about membership uh, issues, encouraging other people, new members to come along, or, or new volunteers. One of the things that we've become immersed in over the last few years is the CPR training. And our we have a husband and wife uh, team, members of the Order in Inverness, they travel extensively to uh, do CPR training and whilst they're there they have, uh, they have uh, encouraged new trainers to join which we have done with one in Wick, we have a, a young volunteer in Wick who does the CPR training. We also have one in Sky. We at present, Mr McBain, Colonel McBain, is in discussions with someone in Stornoway in the Western Isles. So we we look to use CPR training to encourage members or people to join the, the order. Is this particularly young people? The in Wick, the young man's in his twenties. In Sky, it's a, a young man. He's a little bit older than twenty. Uh, being diplomatic, but no, he's he's fairly young. He's much younger than I am, but that's not difficult. <laughs> Just going back to when you originally joined, what kind of activities were you involved with? We would do uh, bucket collections at the football grounds. We, have a, uh, we had two Premier League teams, one in Dingwall, one in Inverness, who very generously allowed us to have bucket collections, pill collections at, at the games. So we would do these uh, every year. Sadly, again, due to COVID, that's that's not been possible. We hope to, to uh, do that again. We've had fashion shows organised by uh, Mrs Fullerton. She she took command of that and did an excellent job. Uh, the national One of the national department stores in, in Burness allowed us to have the fashion show there and she had the local TV news reporter to compare. She did very well and they were very successful. We've had 
uh, Antiques Roadshow evenings where a local antique expert would uh, give a talk on some of his antiques and, and also encourage members to bring an item and he would uh, do a, a evaluation on it. That was very su successful. We've had musical recitals. We've had uh, uh, one of the eye surgeons in, in hospital, number S, has served in the eye hospital in Jerusalem. He worked there and his wife. And they, they have come back to him and, and given us talks on their experiences in Jerusalem. Uh, we had uh, a military evening one one evening where uh, a colonel gave us a chat on his experiences in in, uh, in the army. Uh, we've had varied uh, varied fundraising ventures. One of our members had a stall at uh, Lossiemouth at RAF Lossiemouth on their open day, and that was very successful. So we, uh, we we try to vary our activities. Uh, any any way to raise money. <laughs> Does Lossy Mouth come onto the North East? Lossy Mouth, uh, no, we have members in Elgin, so the, I would think that the North East would, would be to the east, but not far from Elgin. We, we're members in Elgin and Forest. Uh, recently, we have been involved in the blood transfusion triage services. So uh, our two volunteers from Forest and Elgin get involved there. We have a volunteer from uh, the Granton area who gets involved in the Merness one. The chairman gets involved in the Merness. I do. Uh, we have another volunteer from just outside the who gets involved. And, and we tend to go out with the Merness area to when each week the, the team go to a different town in the Highlands and we try to uh, go with them that day. But generally it's the Merness. Our volunteer in Wick uh, on the triage, on, sorry, on the CPR, he he attends the, the Wick uh, Blood Transfusion Day. So we, we cover there and we cover most shifts in the month from our volunteers in, in the Inverness area. What exactly is your involvement uh, with the Blood Transfusion Service? We do the triage. So we meet the donor at the door. We have a list and uh, a time uh, a, a timed appointment. So when the, the, the donor comes, we we mark them off as, as having attended. We take their uh, temperature and we ask uh, fairly, fairly generic questions about their health. If they've got high temperature, if they've had a continuous cough recently, if they've had the COVID, if they've any symptoms. Once we're satisfied that that uh, requirements uh, have been achieved, then we introduce them to the receptionist, and uh, the, the donor then goes into the reception and, and gets into the system there. And the, the, there are more detailed questions there, but we ask generic questions just to make sure that uh, they haven't had COVID and, and they're safe to, to enter the building. That's a very important cog these days. It's, uh, we didn't think it would last as long as this. I think we started in January. And we didn't expect it to go on as long as this, but I think in common with the rest of the world, we didn't expect the COVID pandemic to go on as long as this. But we're very happy to do it. It's a, it's a very satisfying, uh, it's a very satisfying time to be in assisting there. Who coordinates the CPR training? We have a member, Colonel Malcolm McBain, and his wife Jane and they coordinate for the Highland area and they deal with the Priory in Edinburgh. Do they find it relatively easy or difficult to encourage different villages to participate? Colonel McBean was, was uh, uh, the head of the Army Cadet Force in the Highlands and so with his contacts 
all over the Highlands. I think I think he finds it easy. He's such a an easy man to speak to. Uh, he makes friends easily and readily, and uh, he's very engaging. So people enjoy working with Colonel McVean and his good lady. And we're very fortunate there too. I know it's difficult at the moment, but, but going back, um, thinking about the activities that you have done in the past, are you likely to do similar or different activities in the future? We're constantly looking for new ideas because everyone, all organisations now look at activities, fundraising activities. So we try to be different so it's not the same. We've had race nights which are generally very successful but again like everything else the, the novelty wore off so the the attendance at these race nights started to uh, diminish. So we're constantly looking at new ideas. Uh, we have Rotary Clubs who do car rallies. We don't have as many members as we would need to coordinate a, a, a vintage car rally for instance whereas the Rotary Clubs do so we tend not to get involved in, in big activities like that but field collections they happen every week and the football clubs are, are very generous in allowing us to to participate at their at their grounds and it's easier to encourage volunteers to come along and hold a pail for a couple of hours. <clears throat> Would you talk me through the people who have been involved with St John Scotland in Highlands since you started? Since we started? <coughs> excuse me, uh, one of our provosts sadly passed away and his wife, his good lady Margaret, Bill and Margaret Fraser. Bill was a hugely popular man in the area. He, he was a businessman he had a butcher's shop. His brother had uh, the fish shop. The, the, their their parents had a joint uh, butcher and fish shop. When they passed away, Bill and Len split the business. The, the business is still going, both businesses. Uh, Len's son Malcolm has the, the fish shop and sadly the, the butcher shop owned by Bill's son, it was recently sold because he's, they've retired now. Uh, Margaret was a, a hugely, uh, she was a lady who was a very strong, strong personality and she uh, encouraged people to participate, to donate. Uh, she, she was an integral member, as was Bill, of the committee for many, many years until she, sadly she took ill and she was ill for quite some time and passed away eventually some years ago. They were very popular figures. We had uh, a chairman called Gordon McIntosh who was chairman when I was invited to, to join. And Gordon owned a, a toy shop in town, very, very popular toy shop. And he was very encouraging too. Uh, we had uh, Captain Dobson and his good lady from the Badenoch area and Captain Dobson was the, the first chairman of the Highland area. Uh, sadly he passed away and uh, his wife Joan was a member for many years and she would come from Badenoch. Indeed at one stage in the association we had a sub uh, committee in the Badenoch area. And sadly time catches up on us all and, and most of the people have passed away in that area the, the, of the committee. So we merged the subcommittee back into association and then again the, the, uh, merged into the area committee. Uh, Mrs Dobson was a very supportive lady who uh, organised garden parties, dinner parties, coffee mornings. And But again, like everything else, the the novelty of these wears off. Uh, we've had some very uh, interesting members. We have a member, uh, Lady Burton, from uh, Dockfour, just out on the Fort William Road. Her husband, 
the late Lord Burton, was never a, a member of the order, but was very supportive of, of his good lady's involvement. And sadly, her eyesight started to deteriorate, so she couldn't drive. And at that stage, I, I was going to pick her up, it's only five or six miles. So I'd pick her up and take her to the meetings and then take her home again. But uh, her eyesight has deteriorated much worse now and she can't go out. So sadly, we don't see much of Lady Burton, but she was she was uh, a very nice lady to have on the committee. And we had garden parties at the Dockwood House, which was uh, when when both Lord and Lady Burton were were there. And Lord Burton was a, a character. Uh, he was, uh, at one stage, he was the Grand Master Mason in the Grand Lodge of Scotland. So the Grand Master Mason of Scotland is a, it's a, a very uh, high office in, in society. Uh, Lord Burton was the Grand Master, and all over the world there are uh, Freemasons lodges which are attached to the Grand Lodge of Scotland. <coughs> Excuse me, indeed, our present chairman of the Order in the Highlands is the present Grand Master Mason, uh, Ramsey McGee. Uh, and he's such a busy man, he's uh, he has, uh, he's involved in, not only in, in the Order, he's the Chairman of the Order, he's the Grand Master Mason of Scotland, he's the Deputy Lord Lieutenant of Ross and Cromarty, he's the Chairman of goodness knows how many charities uh, in the Highlands. He works very, very closely and spends a lot of hours working with the hospice in Inverness. He's invariably, I'll receive him an email from him at midnight and my phone will ping at six in the morning and it's Ramsey in his office sending me a text. So it's, uh, he's, a, he's a great uh, wake up call, he's a great alarm system. <laughs> but he works tirelessly and constantly doing good. Anyone else? Uh, we had uh, the Reverend Canon Mullen, Stuart Mullen, who was a hugely popular uh, minister. He, his parish is, was in Strathpeffer and he retired from there, but one of the bakers in Dingwall, he was a, an excellent baker, and one of the bakers in Dingwall would allow him to use the the facilities and he would bake cakes for his parishioners and uh, have a coffee afternoon with the cakes. He retired and very quickly got bored so the, the church asked him again to take a small parish just south of Inverness in a little village called Crokey and he took the he took over the, the church there which was in decline. So he, all the parishioners from Strathpeffer followed him to Crokey, which was quite a trek. And he uh, rapidly built up the, the parish in Crokey again. And again, he would have a garden party in the summer and raise £2,000 easily. And that's more than 20 years ago. That's late 90s. So £2,000 for a garden party is an immense sum. Uh, and he was such a jovial character. I have a caricature of, of him I purchased after he passed away, sadly. Uh, he would he would travel to the festivals, uh, any fundraising venture that we had, he would be there. Uh, we started a, a carol service with another, one of the other ministers we had, was Canon Len Black, and we started a carol service We've had that in the in the chapel in Rigmore, then we had it in uh, Canon Black's uh, church in Inverness. Uh, Canon Black moved on, so we now have it in St Andrew's Church in the Episcopal Church in Fortnus. Uh, Ramsey McGee, one of his other talents, says he plays the accordion and he plays the organ, so he plays the organ for our for our uh, carol service. Or we have another member who lives in in Edinburgh, who's from Inverness, Malcolm McCrae. Malcolm comes up, and uh, when he's available, he, he will come up and play the organ for us too. So it's another venture. 
the funds that we raise on that evening every year go to the eye hospital in Jerusalem. So we provide that support every year from the Highland area, as do most areas. In fact, pro probably all areas contribute to the eye hospital, but that's our contribution, the, the, the money's raised on the night of the carol service. Uh, other members, there have been so many, <laughs> and and everyone a character that uh, that we could talk about. Did you mention uh, Mrs. Fullerton? Mrs. Fullerton, Gwen, as uh, Gwen joined when her husband Bob joined the order, and again they were very very uh, active members. Uh, they quickly became members of the order because of their activities and support of activities. Bob became the, the chairman, Gwen became the secretary. Kirsty was uh, secretary at one stage to the association chairman. That was me at the time. So, uh, and Bob and I have been, Bob and I were friends for many, many years since. Uh, before probably before I joined the order, Bob and I were became friends, and we were very close. We we uh, we did a lot of work together. I was at one stage I was secretary to Bob as well in the in the order. Uh, sadly, Bob he, his health was deteriorating quite badly over the last few years, and he passed away two years ago, just after the festival in Inverness in two thousand nineteen. He succumbed to cancer. Uh, Gwen and Kirsty are still very active. Uh, I took over again from Gwen as secretary at the time when Bob's health was uh, becoming worse. So I, I took over as secretary again to allow her more time with to uh, tend to Bob. Gwen was a senior nurse until she retired, so she's the ideal person to look after Bob. She's still very active. She's still on the committee and very active. In fact, she's deputy chairman. Are there many women involved up here? Yes, we have several uh, on the committee. We have uh, Sylvia Hutchison, and her forty is flower arranging. So, any time that uh, we require flowers to be arranged, and it's uh, we call on Sylvia's uh, expertise there. We have uh, Mrs. McBain, Jane McBain who's involved heavily in the CPR with her husband, Malcolm. Uh, and Kirsty, of course. Kirsty works in the King's Mills Hotel and Kirsty's very active too. In the order. And Kirsty is Gwen and Bob's daughter. Yes. Thank you. Um, would you say or not that um, when you first joined that the organisation, the order, was quite male centric. No, it wasn't. No, no. We had uh, Mrs. Joan Dobson from Badnoch, who was whose husband was the first chairman of the order in the Highlands, and Joan was very active in the in, in all the works of the order, fundraising, organising. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Fraser, Margaret Fraser. Uh, she was a particularly strong-willed woman and uh, very, very supportive of the works of the order, very involved in the works of the order. No, I, I would say that uh, women in the, on the committee have, have been very involved and, and, and their opinions are very welcome. We, we do welcome the, the opinions. There's, there's no, I wouldn't say there's any chauvinistic uh, attitudes in the order in the Highlands. Gwen Fullerton would not allow it. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> Thanks very much for that. That's a great overview of lots of the different characters who've been involved. Um, could you tell me how the committee spends money in the Highlands? The committee in the Highlands, we tend to, over the years, we, we have supported various uh, causes. As I said, the, the Eye Hospital is, is a primary one that uh, goes without saying every year we donate to the high hospital and to the operation of the high hospital which you think is it's a hugely uh, valuable and much needed 
facility. One of our members, Frank Spencer Nairn, has spent a lot of time in Jerusalem at the hospital. He He's a very enthusiastic, enthusiastic supporter of the hospital, and so we, we uh, encourage our members to support Frank's ventures out there. He led a, a deputation to the hospital some years ago uh, from Priory, but uh, Frank led the, the deputation and the tour. We have supported a venture called Morning Call, which is uh, volunteers who call on older people every morning. If the phone's answered, everyone's okay. If the phone isn't answered, then a call is gone. A call goes to a, a family member or a friend or a neighbour who goes to check on on the person. We've supported that in the past. Search and rescue dogs. We've supported quite heavily in the past. Mountain rescue is a thing that we've uh, that we have supported. Priory support very heavily mountain rescue, but in the Highlands we supported it as well. Uh, we do our giving tree every year. At Christmas time, and it's working now. It's the giving tree is up now. We have supported uh, the Seagull Trust, which does the uh, cruises. The, the, there's one in, based in Inverness, and there's one I think down down towards the central belt. We have given the Seagull Trust uh, support over the years. Our Ex Provost Bill Fraser was uh, a chairman, I think, of the Seagull Trust in, in Inverness. Seagull Trust have a, a boat that takes tours up and down Loch Ness, and it's uh, they take tours of infirm people, uh, disabled people, uh, people who live in care homes. In fact, <laughs> Ramsey McGee's a, a, a crew member on the on the Seagull uh, vessel in Inverness. So we've supported uh, the Seagull Trust. We get involved in, in various... Uh, members come to the committee and, and ask for support for uh, a particular organisation and, and we look at the accounts and decide if it's an appropriate... <coughs> excuse me. Decide if it's an appropriate uh, venture to support and if so, we're happy, happy to do that. Obviously, our, our fundraising activities have been curtailed over the last two years but we're looking ahead to when we can start to fundraise again. Uh, we have a garden party arranged as soon as we can happily uh, meet and, and the weather now will be springtime or summertime before we can do that but we're looking ahead now, we're actively looking ahead. But we do support as many local charities as we can uh, appropriate appropriate charities. Could you just talk me through the Giving Tree? The Giving Tree is, is an idea that I saw in Aberdeen when, when I was offshore, going offshore, and they had a huge tree outside Marks and Spencer's in Aberdeen in, the, in a precinct. And the, I was intrigued by the idea, so I went to look, and, and there was these little cards, and so the, the idea was that you take a, a card, buy a gift for the the child on the card. For instance, a 10-year-old girl. So you buy an appropriate gift for a 10-year-old girl, you wrap it, take it to the manager in the centre there, and it would be distributed to a, a child in care. So I, when I came home, I mentioned it to the chairman at the time, and we agreed it was a good idea. We went to see the province at the time, Bill Smith, who's a member of our order, and Bill thought it was a great idea, so we organised it in the first year. I think we had 35 children. And uh, so we we had a tree made up by friends of ours who had a sign company. They made up a, an imitation Christmas tree. We put that up in Eastgate Centre in Inverness. We spoke to, or the provost uh, arranged the first names, but the, from the social work department in Inverness. And they gave us names of children and we attached this to a, a Christmas card and put it on the tree and the public would come along, take a, a card, buy a gift, put it in the skate centre management and we delivered it from there. My wife and I 
uh, have maintained that over the years. It's happened every year since. And we had agreed recently that this was our 21st year. But in preparation for your visit, I was looking through some some old paperwork and found that it's uh, at least 26 years. And in that time, it's, it's uh, grown huge. We... At the start of November, we had people phoning and asking when is, when's the tree going up? Uh, questions into the Eastgate Centre Management. Why isn't the tree up yet? It's a logistical exercise that my wife uh, controls more than I do now. And she works very closely with the management of the Eastgate Centre. And uh, so now the agencies give us labels with a child's name which may or may not be the child's name, as we, we have no desire, no need to know the, the child's identity. So we have a, a child's name, uh, an age, gender, and a number. The number is the agency that identifies to us the agency that this child uh, has, has been referred to us from. And there's some initials which are the care manager for the child. We put these on Christmas cards and stick them on the tree. The, the public buy a gift, take it to the, the manager. Now, with the COVID restrictions, the, the parcels sit for 72 hours before my wife picks them up, or I pick them up, and we distribute them to the, the various organisations according to the, the code number. Uh, at one stage, we, we would have around about 1,000 names uh, and each we ask for three labels for each child so and invariably the, the cards go on three times each child label goes on three times on the tree and we distribute to the Western Isles to uh, Sky El Khalsh to Easter Ross to uh, Nairn to Aviemore and to Inverness so it's a very, very uh, popular uh, initiative in Eastgate Centre. And we have children, we families doing Christmas shopping and the children will pick a card and spend their pocket money on a, a gift. And that means as much to us as the, we've, we've had mountain bikes, uh, people come in with mountain bikes, which are hundreds of pounds worth. We know the, the value of these. And they will have a helmet, gloves, knee pads, elbows. So people spend vast amount of money on uh, gifts for the children. And we really appreciate that, as do the children. But the public, as I say, the public come looking for the tree. So it's, uh, it's a very, very successful venture. That, that, uh, sadly, my wife's had more to do with it uh, because I've been busy at working abroad. Uh, but uh, I do try and try my best to help her. She has her own routine, but she has uh, agreed with the management of Eastgate Centre, so it's, it works very well. Is your wife a member? So, no, no, <laughs> no. I've asked her, and uh, she's, she likes to work in the background and just make her contribution that way and, and support for me in order to. Great volunteer. She's a great volunteer. <laughs> um, how is it to organise activities out with Inverness? We have to do that from Inverness, from the committee in Inverness. We arrange uh, any activities out with, but we involve people from that area, from members and volunteers from the area, and, and we find that they're very happy to uh, be involved in their own area. As I said, to, to expect people to travel to Inverness, it's uh, uh, with the roads and cost of fuel, the emissions, it, it's it's not very practical. People do, but we, we don't expect them to. We have members in Port Augustus who are musical and they organise a, a Cayley, uh, and we try to go down and support it. We do go down and support that. We have a member in Easter Ross it was a dinner party every year, and that's very successful too. Uh, so we have a range of diverse activities, social events, 
uh, fundraising events and and uh, and and also the travel out with the the Inverness. It's very active. Mm. <laughs> for such a huge rural, largely rural area. It's it's great fun, and of course the although it's great fun and and great socially, it's doing good for the work of the order. It supports the work of the order, and that's the primary reason that we're in the order. What are your favourite memories, if you kind of look back over the last, crikey, nearly 30 years? Favourite memories? My wife and I attended the Queen's uh, garden party in Holyrood in 2008. That was a highlight. Uh, uh, another highlight was in Haddington this year, where I was promoted, or I was invested as a commander of the order, which I was very, very proud of. I remember one time we, the chairman at the time and I, were in uh, up in Wester Ross at Inch, the place Inch Nadamf, which is the headquarters of the Ascent Mountain Rescue Team, and we were there when Colonel Sterling of Garden presented the team with a Land Rover, and that was a memorable day. Uh, I've had many happy memories of the order and, and days out and functions. Uh, it's, I've really enjoyed my time as a member of the order. I'm hugely proud of the work that we do in the Highlands too. Could you tell me about the mountain bases that are based in the Highlands? If I remember correctly, every mountain rescue team in the Highlands or in Scotland were given vehicles, uh, either Land Rovers, uh, specifically uh, manufactured and, and kitted out for mountain rescue, and also ambulances which were, again, specialist vehicles with raised suspension for travelling on, on the terrain. The Dundonald mountain rescue team were, the, were given four uh, bases because they cover such a, a big area. They found that the, the time lost in travelling to a central base to pick up the gear and then travel out to the location, they, they were losing so much time there that, that it was more advantageous to have separate bases. So they have four bases now across Russia where the, they're all kitted out and when the call goes out they go to whichever base is, is closest to the incident. Uh, Abbey Moore Mountain Rescue Team, we were involved in, in their uh, new base quite a number of years ago now. They purchased a, a church and there was involvement from the, the order in the, the kitting out and the, making the, the church an, an appropriate uh, mountain rescue base. So, uh, all the, the mountain rescue teams in the area have a support. So, a, a lot of the money that is raised in the Highlands is spent in the Highlands for really good work. Yes, the Search and Rescue Dogs Association, we supported the Search and Rescue Dogs Association as well, and they work very closely with the mountain rescue teams. And uh, we presented the Sarda with a, a, a new trailer. Very similar idea. The, the trailer was to a, a mobile uh, uh, base, all kitted out with the, their equipment. And when the rescue was required, or our rescue was required, the, the, the trailer would be taken to the area and the people got their equipment and went off into the hills. And they gave us a demonstration on, on the dogs at work and it was absolutely fantastic. We, were, we had no idea how how the, the a dog would work on the hills and, and the, the team demonstrated their work to us and it was absolutely fantastic. So we were very happy to support the, the dogs. These dogs were, were pets, family pets, but when they had the, the harness put on, they changed into a working animal, and it was really fantastic. And when they found the, the patient or the, the person who was lost, the, the reward for that was to play with a particularly favourite toy, so they would get to play with a toy for a few minutes, having achieved the, their objective, and then 
when that was taken away, when the harness was taken off, there were family pets again. It was absolutely fantastic. And we were very happy to support Cerna. So I have many, many happy memories of being a member of the Order. Amazing. Amazing. Is there anything else you would like to tell me about the work that you guys do up here? No, just that we, we work together well. Uh, we participate in the in the fundraising activities and the social activities that we organise. And everyone is... All the members in the Highlands are friends as well as members of the Order. It's, it's very... It's not an impersonal uh, order. It's a very friendly order to be, or, or association to, to be in. Uh, the fact that you know we meet socially, uh, we all meet at the, the garden parties that are arranged. We all turn up there and meet with our families. Um, so it's it's a very uh, personal activity as well as being uh, a, a charitable. Uh, organisation. Thank you. Um, St John Scotland do so much good work in the Highlands and you guys are so active. Do you think St John Scotland as an organisation is well known in the Highlands? That's something that, that uh, we've discussed many times over the years, the, the, the fact that we don't think it's as well known as it might be. We do try to promote it. <clears throat> we do try to promote the name of the order and the works of the order. Uh, the Giving Tree is a, a big uh, advert for the order because it, we have the, the logo and the name on there and invariably we get questions, what is the order of St John? So my wife and I are happy to explain the origins of the order and, and uh, the fact that we've been in the Highlands for many years now uh, as an area. But I think the profile could be higher. Uh, we do try, uh, as other areas try, but uh, I think there's still some work to do there in, in raising the profile. Do you have, have any ideas of how that might be done? We've looked at, at various ideas. <coughs> Excuse me. We have these pop-up uh, banners that we take to events, and again, when we people approach us and say, "Well, what is the Order of Saint John?" then we can explain then, and the historic as well, the, the as well as the charitable uh, efforts in the order. So, if we do our best to to raise the profile. We have some, we have some. Uh, friendly press reporters in the area who who uh, give us coverage when we do an event. So we do try our best, but I think nationally we could we could raise the profile higher nationally. The the pageantry with the processions at, on on the day of the festival is is, is huge. Uh, local people can see the procession and the order changed the uh, venue every year so it goes to a different area of Scotland every year and that's a great time a great opportunity to raise the profile uh, whatever it is over the years have you seen any particular issues affecting the order of St John no no I don't we've, we've had no no issues in, in the Highland area. There's, we get along very well. The committee works very well together. Uh, more so now by Zoom, for we can have people from different areas that might not be able to come to our meetings. We have open meetings, as well as committee meetings, so that uh, it, it, in addition to the annual general meeting, we have open meetings, so all the members are invited to come along on Zoom and participate in the in the meeting, which we find satisfying in terms of uh, sharing the sharing the news, sharing the initiatives, inviting participation. So 
No, I don't think we've had any issues. What would you say are the main challenges? Geography. Uh, the size of the area. And in terms of fundraising, the uh, activities of other organisations, Rotary Clubs, Masonic Clubs, or Masonic organisations raising. Uh, and you know, there's so many demands now on, on, on charity. Uh, but to be fair, people in the Highlands are very, very generous. I go back to giving tea. We will regularly have two and a half thousand gifts uh, in between mid November and uh, mid December. We take the tree down at, at mid December to give us the opportunity to gather all the gifts in and uh, distribute them to wherever they're going. And people are very, very generous. Even with additional calls on, on their, their uh, funds. Do you think that overall St John Scotland is still as relevant as it used to be? Absolutely, more so, more so probably because, uh, with society today, uh, the the calls on on charity organisations are increasing rapidly. Uh, it's. It's very difficult with the economic climate climate for governments to support everything. We have the Highland Hospice supported by charitable efforts, and I find that very sad that charity should should have to support the hospice, but it's the case, it's the re reality. So organisations like the Order of St John, the work is tremendously important to the country and internationally. What are your hopes for the future of St John Scotland? I hope that we can raise the profile such that we're a household name and uh, continue to support the the charities that we do support and <laughs> it would be nice if we could support more. Uh, that's our aspirations in the Highlands. Can you sum up what you think Needs a bit of bit more work with St John Scotland. I think that the <coughs> excuse me, I think that, that raising the profile of the order, and I'm I'm very aware from my discussions with the chairman and with the uh, staff in St John's House that raising the profile of the order is is high on the agenda, and that's something that we in the Highlands will support wholeheartedly. It, it makes it, when the profile is high, it makes it easier to uh, encourage people to, to uh, support the fundraising activities. I think that's all of my questions. Um, is there anything you would like to add? No, I don't think so. I'd like to thank you for coming all this way to the frozen highlands. And uh, it's been a pleasure for me to meet you and it's been a pleasure to be interviewed. I was quite concerned this morning. I didn't know what to expect, but... I've thoroughly enjoyed the experience, thank you. Thank you very much, Alex. Thank you. <laughs>